Hey everyone, hey and welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. This is your host Tom Quee. Thank you so much for joining me. Before we start this week's new series which is very exciting to do actually a rare thing on the show but you know it does still keep coming i want to say please follow us at bower resume if you want to hear about new uploads news uh me posting old stuff getting in contact with me you can either get in contact with me at bower resume on the twitter as i say bower resume at gmail.com if you want to help support the show go on to patreon.com forward slash battle resume if you donate a pound uh a month you get access to lots of archival material episodes before they drop all that good stuff there's other tiers as well so explore that patreon com forward slash battle rap resume if you want to help the show as well please leave us a review on itunes please comment on a youtube video like us share us you know all that stuff that you hear everyone pedal but it really does help so we greatly appreciate it but yeah this is the part of uh you know where, where i basically introduce the series itself this is something that i'm going to call battle tapes i know that's not a great name <clears throat> excuse me for a series I'm choking up. Clearly, my conscience doesn't want me to say it's called Battle Tapes, but it is called Battle Tapes. And what it is, is going to be myself and a guest uh, going through battle rap albums eps you know by battle rap artists new and old that we think are brilliant and we think more people should listen to and we just kind of want to talk about them really and uh i'm very excited to say that my, my first co-host is kind of you know famed fan beloved internet presence dave how's it going man hey how's it going no it's 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 good man it's good to have you on and um yeah cool yeah we're um getting into uh kruger's lazy ep of course but um mm. just before we start with that I, I guess i'm just curious i mean where did where does your journey start with battle rap youtube just watching yeah. people talking shite to each other on youtube years ago and got into it and sort of never stopped watching it because it's really fun yeah yeah exactly i mean i mean what what were the first battles that you remember uh I, I can remember really weird don't flop battles that weren't very good back then right they, they got good like the really weird ones and like under bridges and stuff but i yeah. wasn't really into it then but i remember seeing them seeing some grind time stuff just old shite to be mm, honest mm, 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 mm. yeah always been a big marv one fan though yeah yeah, yeah. Marv. i mean constant uh, back in the day like he was fucking like he's good now but like he, he was still like, is. yeah 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 but, I mean, he's a killer though yeah yeah and uh I, I remember watching some sort of compilation of him like wrc era with uh quest and they were just he just clowned on people so well he just drips with it, doesn't he? He's yeah. just like, this is what it is, and you're going to take it. Yeah, and his opponent yeah. just kind of goes, okay. Yeah, he's like, if he tells you like to catch it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was obviously 8 Mile fame to yeah. a certain extent as well, which is crazy. Like, um, you know, he has... <laughs> but he's has, been everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's kind of... You don't quite realise it. Like, I don't know if you're aware of um, Dead End Hip Hop the youtube channel i don't know if you've seen that where it's like um maybe yeah it's like four guys from like atlanta and they just discuss the new releases and stuff like that it's really really good and you know they do like oh. kendrick kanye whatever they do the mainstream triple a releases and a few weeks ago they did a marv one episode and i was just like yeah. Holy, and and you know it's not like oh the battle it's not it's not like battle tapes is what yeah. i'm trying to say it's you know they just treated it as a testament of music which is just uh you know i mean but but we're here to talk about kruger anyway yes. <laughs> rather than, rather yes, than marv one um and you know this is i think a lot of people if you, if you go to them and say battle of music some of them might roll their eyes i'd probably be one of them dave to a certain extent because i'm not being I wouldn't be. you wouldn't be you are you are into it no. entirely yeah kruger's tape's good oh no, no of course Kruger. is good like they're all really good from what i've checked out mm -hmm. i know what you mean yeah there is a certain cliche isn't it that they're terrible and shouldn't be checked out and they're just sort of clogging out that yeah. and, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. or, or, or all that sort of stuff but i think i think this is one that you know is deserving your attention and before we get into the tape itself i mean i mean kruger was it around that era you say you, you I'll clearly been watching for quite a long while i guess kruger yeah. must have been there kruger's always been sorry constant though he's like yeah. the bridging gap between everyone because even when there's beefs between leagues everyone likes kruger That's mickey true. likes kruger des likes kruger er likes kruger kruger's yeah. just he's amazing he is like he does him and he doesn't really change no he hasn't at all has he like, no you know uh lazy physically not really either no kind of gotten older but still looks <laughs> young but like yeah. kind of definitely like i don't know around this time 2011 he looked a bit different and now if you compare like to the fresco battle you know yeah. naturally you know he's been to hundreds of battle events and stuff like that it's just time man and you know no 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 one can resist it but kruger i know what you mean and he is kind of like he is battle up to a certain extent to me because he's always been there Yep. you know he is is deeply rooted obviously he's a co-founder of this thing but i think his lines stick with you his style his presence he's not just a kind of character like you know the quality is just ridiculous 
Yeah, he's got really cute wordplay. And mm. he says stuff nonchalantly like it's nothing. Like he'll drop a line like it's a piece of shit and the whole room looks at him like, what the fuck is that thing? Why are you even hiding that? Yeah, 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 yeah. This like he's really good. He is, he is. The aphorisms, the kind of stuff you, mm. like, you wish you thought of. And like, yeah, he just sort of conjured that brilliantly. And um, I can't remember exactly when I heard this. I'm pretty sure there was something attached to the top of a Don't Flop video at the time, sort of bigging up. And I knew Kruger's music was sort of meant to be good at the time. And I yeah. remember... Um, I heard, a song we're going to get onto in more detail in a sec. In a sec. I, I heard "Do Nothing," and oh, I, yeah, I, <laughs> it's an amazingly good song. Oh. Absolutely, like one of my favorite favorite Kruger songs. And I, I heard, think, you know, that's probably my second favorite track on the whole EP. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's really good. It's really strong too. Yeah, yeah, incredibly strong. Like, like thematically, it links so well. And the music that kind of just I don't, I don't know where he gets these beats from or whatever but just the delicate sort of harp strings mm. it feels like almost like from a fucking like final fancy love scene in the best possible way like it's just very classy all of his beats have got little like nods to things i've noticed that like some sound like they're from old like silent films like johnny piano and stuff mm. or there's like a little nod to something every now and then it's really interesting yeah 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 i mean he, he has that sort of collage kind of style to him doesn't he yeah. and um it was quite weird actually uh this is kind of an odd kruger related anecdote that i've never told but um so i was aware obviously Freddie Scott Miller is his name, and um, I'm aware that his dad is like this famed artist. I don't know if you've seen some of his dad's artwork. Um, I wasn't aware, no. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar, actually, to... I think his name's Jeremy Scott Miller. It's very similar to the Lazy EP cover. You know, it sort of has that spliced feel to it and kind of attached on top of things sort of idea. So anyway... Uh, I knew Freddie Scott Miller was an artist, and then in about two years ago, I went to the summer exhibition in London, this kind of, like, thing at the Royal Academy where they just let, like artists of the day exhibit like of days of old and you get like hundreds of new paintings painted that year in these rooms and stuff it's really really cool actually and i was going around and i spotted this picture of like a sort of giant garden in a housing estate it was painted almost like just very very detailed very realistic like not modern at all like just brilliantly painted and it said melissa scott miller and Ooh. for some reason in my head, I was just like, oh, yeah, Scott Miller. I was like, I wonder if this is, like, Kruger's mom or something. Like, like I don't know I don't know why I just thought that. I thought, oh, maybe or some sort of relation to him. So anyway, I don't know why, but I messaged Kruger on Facebook and I said to him, like, is is is, is, is Melissa Scott mom, Millie your mom? Does your mom paint? Yeah, does your mom paint, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, it's my auntie. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Okay, so you kind of, your dad and your sister kind of, like, these painting siblings. Anyway... I added her on Facebook and she's fucking great and I want to urge everyone to add her because she just posts all her pictures and she's a brilliant painter. Like, yeah, and it, and I didn't it, know that. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mad. It's absolutely mad. And it, I guess it kind of speaks volumes to Kruger as well. You know, he comes yeah. from this talented pool of artists. Um, and I, the, yeah, the Lazy EP, I just, before we get into these tracks, I'm going to kind of try and come at it, you know, Anthony Fantano, internet busiest music nerd sort of style going track by track here. But yeah. it's, it's a brilliant brilliant piece of work it was released on march 12th 2011 oh, uh, so 2011 2011 i know i know it's almost six years old it's almost six years old at the time as i was recording this i was in my 20s when it came out yeah it was just fucking <laughs> i still fucking am but, yeah oh yeah you're all still pops you <laughs> We weren't back then watching the watching Marv One, you know. It was uh, yeah, nah. it goes it goes a little bit further. And I don't know if you saw this as well, Dave, but on the actual um, Bandcamp page, um, which is very cool to see that you know he's still selling it for five dollars. Kruger, yeah, I, you know. I did see that. I was listening to it earlier. Yeah, yeah, that's how I found it as well. I still haven't bought some it. The, some of the tracks aren't on YouTube. No, they're not. No, they're not. Um, and but some but alternatively, some of the tracks do have music videos on YouTube, mm. um, like Do Nothing, for example, which has a great, great video as well. But yeah, I mean, the whole vibe of this thing, it, what you want from a battler, like, I guess the reason why earlier when I said my eye rolls with battling, it's like some battlers can just go into the mode of just kind of barring off and empty frets over beats and whatever, but, and it doesn't really distinct itself from any actual, like, music, music, artist music, where I think with Kruger, yeah. it is the, the bridge between him as battler and him as musical artist is just unbroken, like, you know, it's faultless. Yeah, it's just him, he just kind of, that's what he does. Whether there's a beat there or not, he's going to be that, and he's just just really good and consistent all the time 
Yeah, and and he's speaking about things that are just blasé and on the face of it quite boring. But he makes them captivating, being lazy, being awkward in your room and not doing anything. Yeah, I think that's why I like it so much. Because yeah. in my twenties, I was a lazy, fat arse little git. Right. So the things he's you know he's talk, like he's rapping about being in his room and you know like dishes piled up. It's almost like a collection. He can't be arsed. Like he doesn't want to do anything. That was me. Yeah. It still is to an extent. Yeah, it's all of us, man. Like, you yeah, know, but he just puts it out there. And he's like, "That's what it's going to be." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's good. Yeah, it is. It is absolutely brilliant. We kick off with um, "Selfish," uh, the first track. You know, yeah. lots, lots of battlers and rappers have like you know the intros, Dave, where they shout out the producer and and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it's great that Kruger just kind of uh, he just like sighs over the beat. Like, yeah. like it's great. And the first good line kind of sums up the whole tape and Kruger as a whole. It's just kind of Kruger in the place, still listening to this day with nothing to say in the most illest way. Yes. And it's, it's just perfect to uh, start it. Yeah, yeah. Like, it just, you're like, okay, let's go. Mm, mm. Like, and tell me something. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he does tell you so much, but so little as well. Life shit, I sleep all day, mm-hmm. nothing interesting enough to keep me awake. I mean, it's a common, common theme um, throughout this uh, a whole EP. I mean, I kind of class it as an album, even though it's an EP. You yeah. know what I mean? It's 11 tracks. It's he like, says himself, though, that the EP is too lazy to be an album, which I think right. is fantastic. Yes, 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 yes. And, and this, this kind of sense of ennui goes throughout. And it's great because uh-huh. it's, it's not about um you know it's not about going to sleep and kind of what you see and the dmt and the visions it's like no no no, literally going to sleep yeah. like just just yeah. not not like turn it off just turning over facing the back of the character and saying fuck off to the day basically yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, and like, then it, it, it's good though because it switches and there's in the opening track there's some great bravado as well where he does like the eeny meeny miny mo catch rapper by its toe if he screams slash his throat mm. like it flips from one to the next like mm. really quick mm, mm, mm. yeah it's a kind of stream of consciousness laziness yes. like kind of you know like yeah you. and and like <laughs> there's lots of um as i say kruger just does those lines you're like oh why didn't i think of that like to stay indoors like keyholes yes like ah oh that's yeah. so good that's yeah. like the g massive letter from oh yes that's right it's just mm. Yeah, it just hits. And and the beat has that kind of, um, I don't know if this is going to show me as like a 90s baby or whatever, but it kind of has that throwback pop that reminds me a little bit of the Demo 1 music. I don't know if you ever played the PlayStation 1, the Demo 1. Yeah. They always had kind of that odd 60s. It's very hard to sort of put my finger on it, but I get the feeling that Kruger would know what I'm talking about, like anyone... When- was Cubasis on that desk? I th- it may have been. Yeah, they had yeah, or they, Cubase they, or whatever it's called. They did they have music it. software on there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's just you know the music. I mean, compositionally, there's bongos in there. There's this constant hum, like a, like a hand is held on a monotone chord that just keeps playing and mm, above the kind of nice demo one beat. Um, you know, Kruger coming in with a whole stick my carrot nose and a snowman of coke. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so again, that bravado, as you say, and and just lots of kind of like him pushing lines a little further than you think they should go, and working for it. You know, why to the Michael Jackson's toe after he died as a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> That's great because when you look at the the beat and the layers of it, he just kind of ices the top. He just mm, gives you a little mm. sprinkling, just the magic on yeah, top. It's yeah, great. yeah, yeah. That, that's so true. That's so true. And then just loads of these lines: smash you uh, with a chair when your boy's tied to it. Just. Yeah, you know that's great it's yeah so it's great and surreal yeah it's been great too much yeah no 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 it's <laughs> but i think we're going to overuse the word surreal as well when we go through yeah, uh describing mental. yeah yeah i mean keep it surreal is kind of how kruger's mm-hmm. options there but no i think selfish there's not really a hook hook and what we'll learn in this album dave kruger can like write a <clears> nice <throat> hook yeah he has a good chorus on a few tracks yeah yeah like, like really- in very like, although his tone is very soft, there's quite a good melody to the words yes. and his cadence. It's really good. Yes, I completely agree. Yeah, and he's and sometimes he can almost sing a little bit as well, kind of, yeah. like you know, but kind of in a kind of I know what I'm doing kind of way, but it still completely works. Um, yeah, you know, like Eek said in the on the house tour, you've got a freestyling key, and like I think Kruger has key in a certain <laughs> sense. Like he always. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you just quoted Eek like he's a grand <laughs> scholar. You're like, yeah. he says you have to freestyle and key. Oh, I looked over, my dog just licking his arse. It's the most appropriate thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, it's weird, actually. Someone, um, someone emailed the show, barrowsmedgema dot com, of course, and they said uh, get Eek on the show. Like that was just you li- should. That's literally. I, I think yeah, he'd be good actually. Like, yeah. I, I genuinely, although everyone kind of laughs at Eek because he's got a big red head. Yeah, 
and that's all you remember really and he's weird <laughs> but he'd be a good listen he'd be really interesting yeah 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 i think i think you're right yeah i had um jolly j great music it. is that right i've not listened to any eek has uh, eek has good music everyone shits on it we have good tunes what, what toucan is, as well yeah oh definitely toucan what what is what is um what is eek's style oh uh i don't it's kind of He's a bit slapdash, but he's got some little gems in there. Like, he'll be throwing shit at you, just really rapid fire sometimes, and something will stand out. I can't remember the name of the track I was listening to, like, maybe four days ago, someone was talking mm. about it on Twitter. So I checked it out, and it was really good. Mm, mm. It surprised me. I'll have to dig out. I'll send you a message. Yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely, definitely want to hear that. But we, we push on to the, the, title, so, yeah. tr- the title track. Um, definitely one of my favourite songs. I remember hearing this song. Well, I remember when I first heard this song, I couldn't stop playing this song. I just thought it's it was good, absolutely fantastic. That being Lazy. Yeah, that's a good song. Good eyebrow razor, that. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I mean, I was very naive at the time, Dave, and I thought this was like a Kruger original beat. I didn't realise that it's kind of a cla- It's a classic gangstar beat, is that right? I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's gangster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But we've all been there. We've not known a beat. You just have, you live and learn, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, this is going to sound like heresy, but when I listened to the original, because I was curious, uh, and I heard Guru on it, uh, it, it didn't sound as good. <laughs> like, I preferred Kruger on it. I hate to be the guy to drive the stake into the heart of 90s hip hop, but some of it was shite. Right. That's just to be all <laughs> and end all. Like, some of it was great, some of it was shite. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of that monotone delivery. But I guess yeah. Kruger has that as well. But yeah, Lazy, mm-hmm. I mean, grabs you from the absolute off, has mm-hmm. that commanding boom bat beat. And again, it's just so good because these are the sort of beats that are pure bravado in the world of hip hop. I've got bitches, cars, whatever. Kruger's yeah. saying, I, I, I'm so lazy, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to cook anything. I'm going to eat it raw. Uh, he's not even going to use his teeth or jaw. He's going to use a straw. Like it's just. <laughs> I love the not even using my teeth or jaw. Like. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. He's really playful as well, but he still yeah. speaks to like everyone who sleeps late or gets fucking to bed too late. Mm. He says R and R can't be R. Oh, rather do nothing than something. Love that one. Yeah, love that one. It makes me want to kick my couch across the room. But but but, but it's the way it's his cadence that was like R and R can't be R. The this function. So good. Yeah, yeah. It kind of has that lethargic nature to it yeah. as well. Um, PCs, TVs, games, and films. Just kind of, it's not even packed in any obvious way but it just kind of like I, I love it's the dopest sit on sofas never leave the house on the opposite of homeless oh, I, have you ever heard someone sound so effortless, effortlessly yeah. lazy though like he yeah. sounds like he just it's, oh, it's perfect yeah. he, he's about that life man mm-hmm. he's about that he life um, I mean just quotables for days on this track I think a lot of people know this song gotta be trackies as long as they're baggy I'm happy mm-hmm. uh, and, and the whole you know just the hook that I don't want to get up and do shit it's just kind of just it, it does have that swagger i think that's the best way to put it it's very convincing very compelling and 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 like he sort of croons at the end as well it's like i'm gonna be a sloth all my life I that kind that of, yeah 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 and it, i just yeah it's what it, good, good replay value as well too because not eat, none of the songs are really long no so they're good quick hits so you can just flip back on and catch another time and they're really good for that no i agree i agree i think i think going from um you know, going from the first track, selfish into lazy, which is just like uh-huh. if you if you re- like one of the things that's quite funny to do. Just if you haven't even listened to the album, if you just literally read the track list, especially the opening three, selfish, lazy, do nothing. Like yeah. it almost reads as a one thing, doesn't it? Like oh, he's a selfish, lazy, do nothing. Obviously, do nothing means something in a different context. But yeah, selfish is brilliant, lazy even better in my eyes, and and do nothing as, as we said earlier, Dave. What a third track do nothing hit the snooze button like you don't need to say anything you just hit the back button you need to rewind it like yeah. immediately you need more of it yeah, yeah it's yeah. a great track and it's really early in the album too for mm, being so good that's true that's true yeah it took me by surprise listening to like the ep or album whatever it's just mm. the whole tape as a whole that early on there's a track that strong it's really good it's it's a yeah as i said the music is absolutely splendid and one of the things that i really liked about listening to this when i was getting into don't flop is that kruger mentions don't flop you mm-hmm. know i work at don't flop editing videos in my home um take more naps than old people and and just some some lovely some real simple imagery that hits home like you know um bummy but leave me be only for oh yeah only for my only fun i get is from a pc screen where all i do is watch dvds and slip sleep to the menu screen loops just i uh, I, I feel that so i used to live with my aunt yeah. and i shared the room with my cousin a few years ago because my house was just fucked they were doing work to it right 
and he'd fall asleep every night listening to the Two and a Half Men DVD oh, he had. Oh, and I'd wake up at four in the morning going for a piss with men, men, just yeah. repeat every night for about three weeks. And oh, it's torture. Mm, mm, yeah. And, it takes me back to that. A good lesson, that. Yeah, yeah, just the sort of, uh, the caustic blue light. You can imagine it kind of on Kruger's face as he's just kind of, yes. like, whirring out and, you know. And, and then again, he has that, just sleep, because when I dream, life makes much fun. You know, it just has that kind of, like, it's almost... It's quite a funky track, isn't it? It's quite, yeah. it's quite good. Yeah, rhythmically. I think it's very sophisticated, do nothing. And, um, it's, again, for me, I think it's probably the strongest track on the whole thing, except... Do not disturb, which we'll get to later. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. This is probably the strongest after, I think, for me. Very, very similar thematically, aren't they, those two mm-hmm. songs? Um, I think that's why I like them mm, so much. Mm, mm, no, <coughs> I agree, I agree. Yeah, it's wonderful that. I mean, it just shows you how sophisticated to a certain extent Kruger is that he can do something like, you know, we get to Aristocrats, for example, <laughs> uh, oh. which is uh, a pretty wild song. And then something like Do Nothing is is very simple, um, no, sorry, very soft, um, very, very sonambulant, uh, to, yeah. use, to use a kind of over the top word there. But we'll push on to um, Make Room, which is a bit more dominating. It's, it's quite. It took me by surprise again as well. There's a good rework of the Nightmare on Elm Street rhyme in it. Right. Like, uh, it threw me off. I didn't see that coming because I hadn't heard it in forever. I maybe haven't listened to it in about a year. Yeah, yeah. And then I was listening to it again before this. And it's it's really good. Like, yeah. you've got, like, the one, two, Freddy's coming for you, rubbaging through, like, I'm hunting for food. Mm. Like, three, four, better lock your door. More, more pure hardcore. Like, he just, he kind of, yep. not barking at you, but it's really direct. And I quite like that. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, he goes deep really into the ho- goes deep into the horror core actually here. Mm-hmm. Kind of uh, throwback. I haven't really listened to much unusual suspects, but I know a lot of people rave about them. Ooh. Have you have you have you listened to much of Kruger's Not earlier much. stuff? No, Not much. I'll be honest, I haven't no. heard much. Yeah, I've, I mean, I know that it was called the rape tape, and that it was very kind of you know far out in terms of its imagery yeah. and stuff like that. Um, which Kruger's kind of cooled down a bit off really now, but you know, I mean, it's still elements. There's, there's good elements of the horror core all throughout this, like yeah, little yeah. parts. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And it's just, yeah, I mean, Make Rube has that, you know, boom bap kind of ride to it. It's great shit, actually, really. Uh, you like that big <laughs> room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just a big, great hook as well. Kind of swooning orchestral track. They've got that sort of jagged guitar in there. You know, Make, make Room I really like, as well as write whatever pops into your mind type shit. Uh, you that's know, really smooth, that. Yeah. He like it just great. glides right through. It's good for doing the dishes, I find. Like <laughs> I like doing the kitchen, listening to it. Yeah, like yeah. he just he lulls you into this lazy rhythm and you just kind of scrub away. Like it's just good. <laughs> it is. It is. It's very affecting. Oh. It's, very, it's just a, it gro- makes for a great listen. You know, and that line. Uh, don't relate to anybody in my age group. If you're in your early twenties, I hate you. Yeah, like that now more so than ever. Yeah. Fuck you guys, all of you. <laughs> Ain't fruit when I say I eat brain food. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice, Amazing nice. man. Yeah, bazooka Yuvaruka with an actual bazooka. I mean, he get uh, he, he, and like I love the whole sort of you know he talks about um, being stoned on my PC high watching 3D pipes. That's good. That's yeah, the, I'm bored. Collaborate. That's crazy talk. I'm raw freestyle and verse you paid me for. Like mm, that's mm, really mm, good. Mm, mm, I like mm. that. Yeah, it, it just just awesome, awesome stuff. Like this is another just kind of straight ahead beat. And Kruger has the personality to coast and coast. So like you know he's not doing these intrinsic conscious verses. It's just punchlines, but tied together in in a very you know enjoyable way. He doesn't need to do the the no the ties. Like he just he does that, and he I think he knows what he's doing too because they're all put together really bloody well yeah yeah effort. effort is an accident he's a fucking genius because yeah. it's perfect and i think that's a track that he actually proclaims that the ep is too lazy to be an album oh okay yeah it is the longest song actually so yeah. i have to yeah yeah but i i know what you mean there is this just kind of like this effortless effortlessness mm-hmm. about it you know it is the true kruger and it doesn't feel like any of a strained or going for some sort of arch way it just is him and i guess uh never more than kruger on aristocrats um, you know, a, a very, very good interesting one. song. Yeah, very good one, actually. I should... S- yeah, go on. You go, sorry. No, no, you go. No, no, I mean, I guess I should say, just before we get into it, um, The Aristocrats, which I'm kind of tangentially aware of. I know there's a documentary about it that I do need to check out, but it's basically um, a kind of famous joke, is it not, Dave, where comedians put their spin on it and the, the goal is to be as offensive as possible? Yeah, it's just, it's your basically it's your chalkboard and he's like yeah Kruger's not the first to take it on but he he's put it down on gilded paper and 
tucked it up the arsehole if anyone wants to know what the punchline is. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. heard a million versions of it. It's there's a little nod towards the end of the track where you hear yes. clips of other comedians. Yes. Otto and George is in there. Like there's some Otto and George. I don't know if you're familiar with that. No, but no. A ventriloquist act. They were on the opening. Oh, Anthony Otto and George. Early. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's what that track reminds me of. Kruger's got a really strong auto vibe in that, mm. if, if you know what they are, but it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, just So just before we dig into this, I suppose, a tiny bit more context. I just, as you as you were saying, I just searched onto Wikipedia for the aristocrats. It's quite a good article, actually, explaining it. Mm-hmm. Here is uh, their description of it, and he's basically describing the structure of the joke. We'll get to how Kruger does the joke in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is, um, they say, the joke almost always, the aristocrats joke almost always has three elements. Um, the first element is a setup, which includes a family act, going to see a talent agent, either the whole family or just one member usually the and then the agent asks what they do and the whole present show an act that is performed for the agent the second part is the act which is described in as much detail as a teller prefers while most follow most most tellings follow one of few basic forms the description of the act is meant to be an ad lib traditionally the description is tasteless and ribald the goal is to significantly transgress social norms taboo acts such as incest rape child sex abuse coprophilia which I'm not sure what coprophilia is, actually. Um, we have corpophagia as well. Okay, let's just search what those are. Um, cop- Sounds like something you get in your rest from the computer too much. Coprophilia is scatophilia. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, coprophagia is to eat feces um, rather than just to be around them. So there we go. Bestiality is also involved necrophilia and murder. Then the third final part is the punchline where the shocked agent asks what the act is called and the proud dad says, it's the aristocrats. Yeah. So, so that 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 is the form of it. Um, there are many famous versions out there, and I noted down Kruger's. Um, so uh, here we go. Here's Kruger's aristocrat joke. This is basically what the song is for the most part. Right, there are, there are, so here's my interpretation of it. Anyway, we have the father and daughter. The father and um, sorry, the daughter and son stripping. The father pulling out his dick to piss on top of the heads while they touched and tongue kiss. The mom is then licking the excess piss on all fours, and the family dog is dogging her. Um, the dad finishes. The dog and is dogging. The dog is dogging her. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, and the dad then starts shitting on them all. The kids start to feel sick and vomit, and they start um, vomiting on the mom. The dad rubs the dogs vomit on his dick for lube um he fucks the dog then he fucks the snatch this is all kruger by the way then, <laughs> then he fucks the snatch of the daughter to the mum's uh. bum to the son's mouth in that exact order then they slice off the dog's cock and stab it up stab it in on um, in the mother um and they cut off her hands the daughter cups up the mother uh, and feeds it um to the dog um smeared with vomit and dog stick they then the daughter and the dad fuck on top of the mom and the dog's corpses she gets a punch every time she's fucked the father Father then fucks her in the eye socket and he comes so much that he drowns. Gratuitous fucking filth. <laughs> unapologetic with it as well. Holy Kruger shit. hit it. He took the nail and battered it with a fucking severed leg. I wonder if among aristocrat aficionados it's one of the better ones because I, I watched a few of them after this and this is just such a... <laughs> It's, it's good. I've heard a ton of them. Yeah, like the yeah, documentary is yeah. okay. Oh to be yeah, honest. yeah. I do want to check that out. Yeah, it's okay. Gilbert Gottfried has a particularly good version because of his delivery, because right. he's so shrill and high pitched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got a good one. Cartman has a version of it. Oh, and oh. George, like we said, like Cartman has a very famous version of it. I think there's clips of it in Kruger's track. Mm, mm. It's really good. Mm. Yeah, there are some. Uh, yeah, just mad, mad. I think um, Sarah Silverman did one. I haven't actually seen it, but yeah. where she's famous for one, yeah. I'm glad you managed to remember or write all that down, though, because when I got to taking notes, I got my nerd on and started pulling little references to which aristocrats he sounds like, and that's I think in there with Otto and George, uh, an old Bill Burr rendition, mm. and a comedian whose name I can't remember, but he looks like an extra from Casino, and I can't remember the name for the life of me. Right. It's going to bug me for weeks. It's not Kevin Nealon, but somebody like that. Right, right, okay, okay. Uh-oh. But but yeah, I mean, uh, content aside, it is just a great track as well. Kruger rides it really well. He really incorporates, it's quite tough to do, telling a long story and have it fit a beat well. The, the beat on that is perfect for it too. Mm. Like it's, it sounds like game show music at points. Yes. Like this little, 
and he's just running through it, like jumping these hurdles of just absolute filth, and he does it brilliantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's little bits where he just kind of has tandem phrases like in there, mm-hmm. and then it'll stop, and then kind of help back into it, and just kind of yeah, really builds the vivid picture there. He really does uh, keep it surreal, which is which is the next song where Kruger again using his voice like you don't really you know write about guns, yes. Yeah, yeah. So like you know, which he owns it yet again. He's owning the lazy thing. He's owning the fact that he isn't horrorcore and he's doing. Mm-hmm. It through a song it, i love to keep it surreal it's everything you want from a kruger track it's yeah it sounds a bit like if white zombie were hip-hop right like it's got that like old like 90s after seven when sky channels changed to the adult version of the channel <laughs> when like cartoon network became paramount comedy central and all yeah. of a sudden there's exploding cigars and headbutt you with someone else's head it's just it's brilliant yeah 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 I remember that. You've just brought back loads of memories there where, where that was so weird, wasn't it? Where Cartoon Network shared a channel number. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was with just... Paramount. Yeah. Oh, no, it was Nickelodeon, wasn't it? I think Cartoon it was... Network became something else and Nickelodeon became Paramount. Yeah, did Cartoon Network become Boomerang or something like that? Or was yes, that... Boomerang after 6 pm and yeah. they show exclusively Johnny Quest with Haji and Bandit and horrific space ghost episodes edited all to fuck oh shit oh shit I was, horrific yeah i mean i was always cartoon network in the mornings so like deck stories to really love and then i think i was more a nick guy in the afternoons like I, gonna I, age me yeah <laughs> beyond age but when i was going to primary school i used to watch something on sky one called the dj cat show with the puppet of a cat right who would introduce the teenage mutant ninja <laughs> turtles and he had a leather jacket on a bandana because he was gruff <laughs> was, that was the character the dj cat show i've just found yeah. it with a k oh yeah there he oh, is <laughs> fucking terrible but I, I lapped it up every morning i'm like yeah i need to get a jacket <laughs> yeah there's like him next to like a dustbin can like oh, yeah he was like the the sky version of oscar the grouch but worse. No, that's it i never knew this guy had something like that that's funny that's interesting man terrible DJ cat show there we go but um yeah keeping it surreal just again i mean it's kind of of a similar ilk to a lot of the other songs mm-hmm. on here you know it's not as kind of groundbreaking as say a do nothing or something it's kind of it's kruger being boastful over beats headbutt you with someone else's head but it's just mm-hmm. great you know it's got that sort of zappa-esque kind of mangledness to it and i i mean another solid track it is zappa-esque actually but yeah that's very good that's a well sorry point mm. i like frank zappa yeah, Frank Zappa is someone that I've been getting more and more into, actually, because he's he's got one of those discographies that is absolutely unnerving. Like it's you heard j- Ruben and the Jets? You, oh, okay. You are Ruben and fr- the Jets. Bro. Anything on that is, oh, it's like getting wanked off. You, are, here. you are freaking me out right now because, <laughs> no, no, because seriously, today um, at work, I was just going through the Frank Zappa discography, just kind of looking at albums and reading uh. about them because I haven't really listened to him much. The only thing I've listened to is Guitar, which is like a compilation of his best guitar stuff mm. from like the early 90s or something. It's just kind of a greatest hit, whatever. But one of the albums that I looked at was Ruben and the Jets because it's, it's him doing like doo wop stuff. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, get, get Ruben and the Jets. There's a song on that called Anything that. It's, it's nothing that you expect Zappa to be. It's this nice little waltzy like love song. My mom and dad used to listen to it when they oh. took me for a haircut when I was about five. He'd make breakfast and listen to Frank Zappa. Ah, you know what? I've the got best it. shit ever. No, but it's so weird just saying that because literally Ruben and Jets is open on my Spotify before we chatted. And now, and now it's been brought up. Okay, I'm going to put it on my playlist now. Yeah, okay. You that's should. good. That's good. Okay, yeah, interesting. Yeah. No, I, um, I knew Zappa through uh, Steve Vai. Um, Steve Vai's great. Yeah, 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 I love Steve Vai, man. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what, I did notice though. Now that you say that, mm. people that I talk to that are really enjoy battle and enjoy the intricacy of it, rather than just some guy calling someone a faggot and saying they want to get oh, stabbed yeah. in the cunt or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they all like stuff like Steve Vai. Uh, they like like what's his name? Fucking Malmsteen guitar dude. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Eight hundred yeah. hand tap. Yeah, I can yeah. never pronounce his name. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a weird. Yeah, it's like it reads like ying wee or something yeah. yeah it's got a sort of no i love that i mean that sort of virtuoso guitar stuff is like my bread mm-hmm. and butter man i love that i love that sort of shit yeah but i think steve Vai was like 20 or so i was reading it today and he sent zappa in a sort of transcription and zappa like hired him on the spot um because it was just like this impossible song and imagine being in the room with steve Vai and frank zappa <laughs> as well. a- a- 
apparently, by the way, I mean, we need to get back onto Kruger, but yeah, yeah, I, was re- I was reading today that Frank Zappa is, well, has gone down in history as one of the most disliked SNL hosts. Um, apparently, he was a right bastard on it. Like, he was really ironic in this kind of, you know... I mean, SNL, to me, has always been a bit overrated. I don't know about it just because I'm English, but... I don't... Yeah, I think it's because being British, I look at it and I'm like, I guess. I mean, someone's doing a monologue, but the rest of it's like cafeteria high school acting at shite. Yeah, 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 no, I agree. And it's like... I never understood people who love that more doorbell joke, more cowbell joke. Oh, sorry, what's it's just, the point? In there? Is Will Ferrell in a belly talk? Yeah, it's just, but it's just—it's just a guy playing a cowbell because there's cowbell in that blue oyster cult. So, like, there's no wit to it. I don't know what it is. Like, it's just. But but yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go with the flow um, is another one. And you 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 spoke earlier about the sort of. Um, you know the Kruger, uh, the little things that will put in from certain things yeah. that you'll hear. This to me, and I know it's not correct because in the back of my head I'm saying so, but um, this because go with the flow is quite unique because it has those weird little like electronic arpeggios kind of piping up like quite spike like did it? Yeah, it's a nice break. Had just yeah. passed halfway through the album, it takes you a different bit, just yeah. leads you astray a bit. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me a little bit of Final Fantasy VII, like that sort of music. I don't know if you ever played that, but definitely yes. in, the, in the earlier levels, I kind of it was because it's in a kind of dystopian, electronic, Blade Runner esque kind of world, and it, I guess it kind of has a little bit of Blade Runner to it as well, a little bit of Vangelis. But um, you know, I'm showing my nerd here, I think about. It. Have you ever listened to Mickey Worthless's first tape? He's got a song called Color Code Everything on it. Oh yeah, from from the Pokemon the, game. The beat on that and the beat on this are two of my favourite beats. Like I've heard people go, they're just really like not chip tuning, but like nice video like yeah. when you of a video game and they take yeah. it to a good place. I smile like a little boy. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel they're really that. good. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. I remember uh I had Mickey on actually and we spoke about the uh the, the that song and he said it was Lavender Town, which is Oh I mean, yeah, so you did fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I listened to it. Yeah, that but yeah, that was a good that was a good episode, man. That was good to have Mickey on. Yeah, you know, he was he was really good, man. That was uh I mean that episode's been viewed a lot and it's been quite recent as well, so it's quite cool to see that a lot of people, you know, are interested in because obviously the guy is a fucking, you know, monument in battle rap. Like, you know, he is he I is think very to a point though when you look at all the people who've been in it for a long time they kind of all are like mm. guys like Kruger guys like Archaic Archaic's really underrated oh yeah hell yeah like, hell yeah I could if you've got an hour I could tell you why everyone's wrong but yeah. <laughs> you know but um, yeah Go With The Flow is really good yeah 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 it's got some good stuff in there like he said he'll, he'll battle you for a can of soup uh, prolific with dope lyrics like rubbing your nose uh, rubbing your nose in it like coke sniffers yes sorry. Like, yes pretty yes, good yes, stuff yeah nice nice nice, nice, nice. Quick. Yeah, very, very, very quick. Um, the bars, you know, he's got bars. Uh, run around in a mask like Crash Bandicoot. Oh, Crash Bandicoot bars. Oh, my God. The original Naughty Dog, you know, uh, including Crash Team Racing as well. Um, oh, man, Crash Bandicoot, amazing set of games, I felt. Like, the design was amazing. Yeah, they, they go hand in hand with Spiral for me. Oh, think. yeah. Oh, yeah. Spiral Dragon was great. Well, I mean, you know what's a 90s thing? Platformer games. Like, yes. they don't really exist anymore, or maybe they do, but they kind of, they, you know what I mean? They were very much a PlayStation thing, weren't they? Like Crash, like Spyro, like Ape Escape and Croc and all those sort of games. Yeah, you don't get shit like Croc, fucking no. hell. <laughs> Croc, I know, who you <laughs> Croc. Gobbos, man. Gobbos? <laughs> yeah. You know, if you got a PS4, like, the, a lot of indie platformers come out, like, these yeah. days, you get lots of, but they're okay, they're not as long, but games like Guacamelee and shit, they're all right. But they're not as good as old stuff. No, no, it just kind of there's just that vibe to it, isn't there? There's kind of kind of the PS1 graphics as well. They're very charming. I think I think they've the, aged really well. The startup noise as well. Like that. Oh, <sighs> holy shit! I mean, Frank Ocean knew what he was doing because the start of Channel Orange is the startup noise of a fucking PlayStation One, isn't it? And it's just like That's it's just yeah, very very. It just yeah, he had such an excitement when you turned it on. Like I think the it warm is, sound. I think it is the goat warm up. The goat the goat startup sound. Although, do you ever turn uh, a Game Boy Advance SP on? Uh, did it have that ding? Did it have yeah, a little s- coin noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh. was a good sound. That was a good sound. Good as well. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But oh, what, I'm trying to think what other the good ones are. Um, the game. Although Kruger's, Kruger's had quite a, like, uh, a story tester with Crash Bandicoot. He's got the track with Pedro on his yep. YouTube channel as well. And he's got the VP16, which, oh. by the way, is better than 95% of the fucking webhams and drops. Yeah, okay, that is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, Kruger doing that is fucking. Oh. <laughs> and over the warp theme from Crash Bandicoot three, oh, no man. Less. Yeah, yeah, what a game, what a game, and and what a theme as well. Just so busy, 
That and his bars sort of trickle over it like water. They just yeah. take the easiest way to the end. Just there we go. Right <laughs> it kind of has a lazy EP feel, doesn't it? He's kind yeah, of being it does. honest as well. Like he's saying, like you know, look like a cute boy and all that sort of stuff. He's playing to those things, but yeah, no, the crash. Uh, yeah, that that I just it's perfectly Kruger. Like you know what I mean? He's not going on fucking you know um, any of those any old songs. It's just kind of coming out. Uh, so well so well love that song and loads of good lines of this as well cause a plane crash and use an anvil to parachute that's good that you one know, very very lovely. i've got that one written down here as well yeah but yeah what you were saying about kruger that's spot on yeah like especially with the crash theme it's perfect for him it is it is it is yeah i would i mean kind of i mean the thing about kruger is he gives us things and doesn't over overlay the point you know he gave us a lazy p there wasn't really anything else after that sort of thing in terms of like you know an ep I would love to hear Kruger over PS1 beats. Um, oh, you know, yeah. some sort of like concept album or something. Just come up with stuff like, please. And even if you just fished out old ones, like, I don't really. Actually, it's funny you mentioned Spyro. You know who did the Spyro soundtrack? Who? It was the drummer from The Police. Was it? Yeah. Um, what's his name? The drummer? Stuart Copeland. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know it's, it? a, yeah, it's a mad fact, isn't it? The yeah. guy from The Police did the, the, go- the Spyro soundtrack. I'm going to look it up now. I am a hundred. I'm, li- I have, I'm sure it, yes, yeah, Spyro, it comes up when you Google him. It's the third thing that comes up. <laughs> that might be my new video game music fact. For a while it was, do you know Faith No More? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, what's his name again? The singer has gone Mike, to my Mike head. Patton. Yeah, Mike Patton's amazing. He does the zombie noises in out as a, uh, Left for Dead and The Last of Us. He does the infecting and stuff. Oh my god, that's crazy. And he done the musical score for, I think it's Transporter 2. He used like Fisher Price babies toys and shit. Oh, nice. It's yeah. Genius. <laughs> that is genius. Yeah, this is just uh, from Wikipedia, but it is sourced. Drummer Stuart Copeland, formerly drummer of the band Police, composed the soundtracks for the first four Spyro games. Copeland, oh. Copeland, I know, yeah. <laughs> Copeland made music for each world in the games as well as music devoted to each level, often playing each level so he could tailor the mood of the music to the level. Like that, the bloke uh, from the police sat and played Spyro and went and <laughs> banged about on some drum fills. That's fucking amazing. He held down Square and Spyro ran with his horns down. Like you know, he just he just went deep into it. But that is crazy. It's funny actually because uh, I'm not like a giant police fan, however. But I always remember this fact that before the police, Stuart Copeland was actually the front man of a British punk band called Clark Kent. Um, yeah, I'm not- I know that. Yeah. Oh, you do know that. Yeah. I, I did know that. I like punk a lot. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I did. But yeah, I remember seeing it on top of the pops too or something. And it was just quite cool. And it was like, oh, by the way, this is that guy. But yeah, the Spyro fact is just. That's amazing. I'm like, still shaking yeah. my head at that. Like, what? I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't need what to believe now. I don't know if you did any other game music or anything. You just happened to do the fucking Spyro theme. So yeah, there we go. I'd there love go. to hear Kruger over then. No, that'd be good. Oh, that'd be awesome. Because I bet there's just some, you know, <clears throat> I remember the games quite well, but I don't really remember the music as well but i bet there's some awesome stuff in there yeah, it doesn't stand out as much as the crash music no but there's no, got to no. be something yeah yeah of course of course and um the next track which is again you know testament to the fact that kruger can just talk about anything and make it really interesting awkward um you know so, so original to have a song about just how awkward someone is get made fun of and don't know what to say straight away think of a comeback too late lay it on the sleeve i think we skipped the track you know did we we skipped Kruger. Oh, we did skip Kruger. My mistake, my mistake. So, yeah. How dare you? <laughs> um, with the woo-ha beat, right? Yeah, I, I mean, love that. Oh, great to hear him on that. Very good. Yeah, he has a great line in that. He, like, chicks who want babies, you don't want it with me. Cigarette pack in my sleeve, don't coffee my steez like Dolly the Sheep. Ah. Oh, yes, 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 that's yes. That's fantastic. That is, that is, actually. And, like, he plays that kind of slightly demented nah 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 like he has mm-hmm. all those different voices at the start kind of coming over each other like a Muppet chorus or something like you know it's uh it's very distracting it's good yeah 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 definitely because I mean like this is a beat you would know like you know a lot of these beats are probably from other people anyway but this is obviously quite a famous Buster Rhymes kind of beat but still just kind of just plays brilliantly he like has that puts off- his own stamp on it yeah he like, does he stamps it he does, and it's still, but he still sort of plays with the hook that was originally for it, and kind of just, yeah, just ties it all together so well. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I love this track. Again, it, I'm not going to criticise the album in any way at all. You know, we, clearly we both love this music, but like, there is, there is certain like archetypes of songs, and this is another kind of similar one to Make Room or Lazy, where it's just kind of him being bullshit. But the personality wins through, and like you say, none of them are too long. They all just come in, come out, two hooks, two verses, and powerful yeah it's like someone asking you to taste something like that's quite nice Mm. i mean i might not want a bowl of it but that spoonful was fucking lovely yeah oh yeah oh yeah 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 really good 
I mean, looking at the actual um, track listings, there's nothing that goes over, fr- nothing that goes actually past four minutes, um, and the majority of the songs are around you know two and a half minutes or so. So it is very you know very quick, very very into it, and we get back to awkward. Which yep. we, you know, um, I awkwardly uh, skipped over, and it's great. Yeah, uh, it's great that um, the metaness of this song as well. He's so awkward that he fucks up the chorus. I there's a note that I took down. Yeah, while he's in the chorus is him fucking up the chorus. The last time he says it, he kind of says it inside out. He says, "I'm chorus fucking up. This is awkward," which is uh. great. I had me laughing out loud. He's like, "I'm chorus." It just took me like completely by surprise. It's so much fun to listen to as well, yes. this track. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, and it starts to sort of almost break down at the end and kind of skip over itself and just, I mean, yeah, the end of the song literally fucks up and goes awkward. It goes in and out, and the beats with the pipes and, and, and the boom-back feel to it all. Um, I just, yeah, I, I, another brilliant track. I really like this song. It, there's only so much you can say about songs that are this good, though, before you just start sitting going, it's really good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're waiting for someone else to agree so you can be like, I knew it. Yeah. Because it is really bloody listenable. Mm, like, mm, yeah, hell listenable. Like you could just put this into a playlist amongst any other track. And when it comes up, it wouldn't feel like oh, this what the you know this is low rent. It'd be like oh no, this is just great. Like you know this is fits abs- too. Yeah, yeah, it fits. It fits really well. And we get to the um, the final song. This eleventh track. So you know there's a lot of material on here. To be fair, like you know there's some short songs, but eleven songs, and they're all very different. They've all mm-hmm. got a different character of their own. Um, this is do not disturb, Dave. This is my favorite. This isn't even, I'm not talking like battle rap track. This is one of my favorite tracks of all time. Wow. Like, it's so good. Have you seen, you've seen Louis, right? The TV show by Louis C.K. Oh, of course, yeah. The piano on this sounds like the VTs for Louis when it debuted. It sounds like Mm. they've lifted from the black and white footage of him walking out, just lifted the piano and laid it in this. And it fits so bloody well. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really good. It is, it is. It's continuing that theme of wanting to sort of cocoon yourself away from real life. You know, yeah, he says, a worm, I want to squirm into my bed, into a cocoon made of duvets, I won't come out a butterfly, just a bummy just guy. a bummy guy. Yeah. yeah that's, that makes me smile more so than it should, but it's just, he sounds so comfortable on this track as well. When you listen to his tone and his delivery, yes. he sounds like he's sat down. Yeah. Like, I know the sound of sitting down. I sat down a lot. He's sitting down, like yeah. you can tell. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that, yeah. And he Probably just, isn't. Yeah, but it has, <laughs> that, it has that sort of count in with the vinyl as well. It doesn't yeah. sort of immediate, and then he just kind of leave me. Like, like you know, he just, the lovely beat starts. Absolutely. It's like, like wet washing. That's how I described it. Or then it sounds like wet washing. Like, it just unfolds no matter where <laughs> you grab it from, and it just keeps coming like yes. a tombola. Yeah. It just goes and goes. He, he has such a original grasp on melody. Like, it's uh-huh. it's so conversational. But it's just, it's really listenable too as well. Almost like, you know, I, I maybe compare it a little bit to the streets in the way that Mike Skinner can sometimes talk, but it's still very, you know, engaging. And like, you know, I wonder cr- if, he, if he set out to do that or it's just a natural thing. It sounds natural. Yeah, it does. It really does. Yeah. It's kind of. What's uh, that, that line he has? Um, I'm a fiend for Kippen. Just that alone is really yeah. nice. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, one f- <laughs> rather have one foot in the grave uh, than have one foot in the door. That's brilliant as yeah, well. Yeah, that is brilliant. Yeah, um, it's the ultimate couldn't give a fuck attitude. Yeah, yeah, the hermit anthem. Like, you yeah, know, just this. like I know you want me to do that, but I'm just not gonna. And it just—it just still sounds playful, though. It still sounds catchy. It's not like a, a really depressed guy in his bed, like you know. Yeah, he's I, comfy with the fact that he's yeah. alone. I think he says at one point uh, that he's a. What was that? Oh, it's, it's been in my head all day. I've been repeating it. Like, so chill, they leave. Peace, peacefully in my own filth sleep when I'm bored only wake up when I can't sleep anymore mm-hmm. I'm lonely stuck with myself I don't even know if I know me anymore but he's uh-huh. okay with it too yeah 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 he's yeah, yeah. just like that's what that is the soul searching it's it's, yeah. it's happy sadness it is it is actually yeah it's it's a it's just a comfortableness with that lifestyle and acceptance you know and, and embrace yeah. um and I mean pff, it's the lazy EP, like, you know, it's just a terrific, terrific piece of work. I mean, it's a shame that since its release, um, you know, which is so mad that we're coming up to six years now. And um, funny, f- yeah, f- funny as well on the band camp, it says uh, the little note that he has is lazy boy won't even get up to the rip shop. Which just kind of, <laughs> just kind of adds it even more. <laughs> I didn't even spot that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, um, just uh, I, and by the looks of it, he sold quite a few as well. Quite a lot of people have supported, so that's very, very cool. You know, giving back to the cause and that. But um, Kruger, if you're listening, can you bring out a new EP soon, please? 
Or don't if you don't want to. Just well, repackage lazy. lazy EP in a hard copy. That'd be quite nice. That would be nice, actually. I mean, we get these things, Dave, you know, with kind of like the 30th edition of... The 30th yeah. anniversary edition of Led Zeppelin 4 with 25 B-sides. And I would love, oh. like, the vinyl, the lazy EP. The big squishy cushion vinyl. Yeah. Just cuddle the cover and go and sleep on the couch with it. Holy It'd be quite nice. Kruger, I mean, you know, he's such an unassuming cool guy as well. Like, I'm sure it's not necessarily something this sort of praise <laughs> will probably come as a surprise, but you know, it's just, I love it. It's the best possible start to battle tape. So, like, it's a the best example of battler's music being above and beyond what you expect it to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's just perfect, man. It is, it is, it is just absolutely wonderful. And, um, I guess just before we wrap up as well, I want to urge people not only to listen to the lazy EP, but to go on to Kruger's YouTube channel. Um, yes. Kruger, Kruger 7. Obviously, Kruger, um, you know, still an integral part of Don't Flop, edits the majority of the videos. You know, you can see him filming everything. You know, he's still creatively getting that out. But Kruger 7, um, his channel, which only has 2,100 subscribers, uh, which is just kind of a, you know, travesty really. and doesn't have that many views. A lot of these videos that I really like aren't really that sort out. But it really really shows you an insight into who Kruger is and you know the first upload actually was um a jump off street battles best of respect BA so he just kind of put clips together and stuff like that that was uploaded June 2006 so fucking you know, hell yeah it's a decade ago yeah I know I know it's fucking mad so yeah Kruger was on there um doing that sort wait of how stuff. old is Kruger now I think he's like 26 so when he was 16, he was yeah. making best of respect BA, and 21-year-old <laughs> me was probably watching him like a twat. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean, he was... I mean, you look at the grind time, um, you know, and even early down flop, he's young, like... Yeah, I think he forget, though, because he's been around so long. Yeah, yeah, no, he definitely had that, that boyish nature to him. Um, interesting, the first non-battle rap related video i'm just going through chronologically here through kruger 7 is a fat boy slim animation contest that he entered um for right here right now i haven't actually um Ooh. yeah i haven't actually watched that but that'll be interesting to see I and then that was there no yeah and then there's just lots of kind of like interesting little animations songs of his with the kind of mad imagery we have yeah i've seen like drug but drug but bandas with pedro's there yeah packet crest olympics the the ground scene investigation stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the very important geezer. Yes. Crazy. It's just, his YouTube channel is kind of like the the visual representation of the lazy EP. It just mm. kind of picks up and drops after years, and something else good comes out at the end of it, and it just tags on. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He hasn't released a lot recently. I guess uh, in my suitcase as well. Yeah, that's bloody good. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. I had that on earlier. I was looking through his YouTube channel, just watching little bits, seeing if there's anything I'd missed or anything I could like maybe talk about. But really good. It took me by surprise. Yeah, yeah, you know, seriously, it was uh, uh, in my suitcase, which people might be aware of, is where Kruger sort of goes like multis from suitcase and kind of goes through the items. And each time he completes the list, he'll, he'll go back to the start and add a new item. Um, and it comes with like kind of a, a janky GCSE powerpoint presentation as well it's fantastic like is there like split screen with having yeah, a presentation yeah, yeah. like new plate toothpaste type of thing <laughs> yeah, it's him there just yeah. doing it all it's and and the and the um the description just says simply this took a lot of takes um, so yeah <laughs> that, that's the kind of video and i know this is kind of a very like internet age thing to say but that's the kind of video that could go onto reddit and go viral like well just, yeah you know just as a fun because it's just a very impressive piece of writing and performance it reminds me of when, sort of maybe like 10 years ago, when the internet was sort of becoming accessible to everyone and memes started kicking off. I was talking with my mate about old memes, mm. about the first meme we could ever remember. Right. And that's the kind of thing you would see. Like stuff like that would be someone doing like the My Suitcase video, but it stands up well too. Yeah. Like I enjoyed it today. It was yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is, yeah. And, and the places mine goes as well, suitcase, toothpaste, iPhone, New duvet. And, yeah, yeah. The, Duvet is great. Yeah, yeah. I, I got popped at that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really, really good. But, I mean, we've just been praising Kruger the whole the whole hour, but it, it's it's rightfully so. I mean, he is a genius. You know, he, I think I think everyone loves him. Like, you know, he's he's most people's favourites. I think Soul, actually, when he was on here, said that he was probably his favourite. Like, you know, and that is high praise indeed. Uh, what more could you ask for? Yeah. Soul himself is fucking... Bah. They're just hours, mate, hours. Oh, See him oh. in Edinburgh, I wanted to carry him home. I could have carried him home, honestly. He's so good. 
so good. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's my favorite. But yeah, definitely, I could see Soul appreciating Kruger. Yeah, you could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Soul is. I mean, he's like the form that he's in at the moment and the run that he's in. I don't think we've ever seen anything like it in battle rap. It just has the momentum as well, because as he gets better, he gets better, and the crowd reacts better. The reaction he got in Edinburgh was room shaking, just at his name. Like, it was thunderous, and then he started, and he just didn't stop. It was brilliant, man. Yeah, yeah he was absolutely... He Whoever was... he battles next is fucked, categorically, just fucked. And well, I... I will point and laugh at him, because he's <laughs> just... he's. I, like, have you seen... Did you watch the pay-per-view for I Edinburgh? have. Uh, yeah, I saw him versus Real Dude. At yeah. one point, when he does that... Three old Philly flow shit. Like his posture as well. He even steps towards real deal like he's nothing. He's like out of the fucking way. Like yeah, this yeah. is what. Yeah, he's just him and he's on it right now. It's amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well, he's battling shocks, I believe. So, Ooh. um, I you know I'm pretty sure it's been announced. But yeah, that is going to be a. Has it been announced? I don't do things. It hasn't been announced. Well. No, it hasn't been announced. Announced, but as in like I think um, you know most people know logically that'll be both their next battle sort of thing. Uh, you know, I, think, ah, I, think. I could see Soul taking that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But ah, I could get ugly. Mm. I watched that regardless. Though. Holy shit! I watched the fuck out of that. Oh fucking right! I was first in line. <laughs> oh my that, god! So. Yeah, that is gonna be that is gonna be incredible. You get- do you get a weird, like, it's not kind of like sadist when two people you very much enjoy are going to clash and you're like, oh, he's going to fucking see something terrible to him. Yeah. Like, I'm going <laughs> to, like, there's that part that's like, what's he going to do? Yeah. Oh, my God. It, yeah, it's going to bring the best out of both of them. But to be honest, the best is already out of both of them. You know what I mean? They're at their I, best now. Like, it's just been, it's just been I insane. I think Shox has got, a, like, although he's really good, he's got a lot more to come. Like, he posts little lines here and there on Twitter, and I'm scratching my head, like, where the fuck that come from? Mm, mm. And he never uses them either, and they're belters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I, I think I think he said on the show recently, like, you know, when he was on last, he stopped smoking weed, his mind got sharper, and he'll walk down the road and just a hundred punch signs will hit him from wherever he sees. Like, he just has that sort of mind. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I can't wait. Can't wait for that. If you listen to the... <clears throat> if you listen to this in the future and, and shock soul has already gone down, how the fuck was it? Because, you know, I can't wait to see it. I don't want to wait. Come back and tell us. Yeah, yeah, comment, comment, comment. Come, come back and tell us. Because <laughs> I think, you know, similar to that battle, the Lazy EP is timeless, um, Dave, for me. You know, it hasn't aged an inch, but it is every inch 2011. It is every inch Kruger. Um, I fucking love it. I want to urge everyone, if you listen to it, check, just search the Lazy EP Kruger on Google. You'll find it on Bandcamp where we listen to it. It's also on YouTube. It'd be great if it was on Spotify. And but share it. Don't just listen yeah. to it. Share it. I want to buy it. So good buy it yeah buy it give the man a couple of quid yeah yeah he's worth it it's worth it you get unlimited streaming via the free bank account app i'm just reading off the page now but um yeah i'm uh, just without giving across too much i guess what would be next i mean should we do ten thousand hours i guess the c major one yeah it's a bloody good take it's a solid as hell take. layers and layers of just oh that's really good that yeah yeah, yeah, his delivery on it is impeccable, and um, there are some greats. I mean, I mean, who else is there? What are the other big battler tapes that you enjoy? You got J Short's new stuff is really, honestly, really strong. Mm-hmm. You've got like you got the notables. You got Tony Smith show. You can break oh, that down. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good one. That's yeah. fantastic. You got the trilogy tape from Danny and Sykes oh, yeah, and Frankie. Yeah, yeah. You've got Frankie's tape itself. Uh, just the right. Just the right. Yeah, Danny's track uh danny's tape i think it's called laws of attraction is it loa that's coming out uh i think i you know i think willsey's actually got some music that oh. i've heard is actually pretty good but yeah. um, i'm not sure i've listened to it gemini um unknown, gemini? unknown suspects um with shinobi is very strong fucking blizzard Bliz- oh, blizzard's got some bangers man okay blizzard's I, got good music i mean we're not even i guess we're being a bit you know we're just keeping it to don't flop, but Immaculate. Ilmac as well. Respect yeah. BA. Respect. Oh, yeah. Respect BA, yeah. Well, uh, there's, there's so many, like, so many. You could mm. go for each music as well. Yeah, there'll be, there'll be crazy. Yeah, there's going to be crazy amounts. But, um, Dave, it's been great to have you on, man. This has been, it's been uh, terrific. Yeah, yeah, this has been a good chat. I mean, I guess finally, how do people get at you? You're on, you're on Twitter, right? Ah, you'll just see me floating about calling yeah. somebody a poof or something. Just yeah. give it a shout. <laughs> Um, but yeah I, I, I guess I want to finish off by just urging everyone to check out the Lazy EP hopefully we've convinced you if you've never heard it and if you have heard it you already know how good it is so go back and listen to it yeah. but um, yeah Dave and everyone else uh, cheers man cheers
Shout out to Conquay every time. 